As a photojournalist during the 60s and 70s, my photographs appeared in major magazines such as Life, Paris Match and Stern. In this video, I'll be telling you all about the cameras I used, show you the photographs I took and explain the technical problems that had to be overcome in order to capture them. I very much hope to inspire everyone passionate about photography to recapture the true meaning of traditional photojournalism by starting to tell stories with their cameras. In my previous video, I discussed my workhorse cameras, the Nikons F and F2. Today I'll describe my favourite long focus lens, the Novoflex Follow Focus. This used a spring-loaded pistol grip to adjust the focus. The lens shown here is the 240mm version, which had apertures between f4.5 and f22. Here's one of the sequences which I filmed with this particular lens and camera. As with several of my action shots, this featured a stunt created by the ever-inventive and risk-taking Joe Western Webb. He fitted a family saloon with wings, a tailplane and propeller and intended to fly it, or rather get a stuntman to fly it, over a disused quarry. When I arrived at the location, black clouds covered the sky, the car was black and the rocky surroundings were equally dark, as was the water of the quarry which shimmered a hundred feet below us. Clearly getting a shot which distinguished the black car from its black surroundings was going to pose a problem, especially since the light was so poor. When we started preparing the car for the stunt, it was first found that the bolts which held the wings of the car onto the roof came within a centimetre of stunt driver Dave Brooklyn's head. These risked piercing his crash helmet and potentially killing him when the car hit the water. This was taken care of by the stunt crew drastically lowering the driver's seat. Unfortunately in this position Dave was now seated so low he couldn't actually see the jumping ramps through the windscreen. The fast-thinking Joe stuck two long wooden poles at the end of each ramp. Dave could see these through the windscreen and all he had to do was to ensure he hit the sticks, which he did with great precision. You could see one of them flying through the air after the car had struck it. By the time all this was done, the light levels had dropped even lower and I was very concerned that the negatives would be underexposed and the black car would be virtually invisible against the equally black background. I reluctantly told Joe that I would have to cancel the shoot and hoped the light levels would improve by the following morning. They had, uh, but so too had news of the stunt. When we turned up, the road running beside the quarry was crowded with local and national photographers. It looked like I was about to be scooped. Joe came to the rescue by hiring 40 tough-looking roustabouts, that is, labourers, from the nearby circus. They all stood in a line on the quarry side of the highway, each holding a long piece of canvas. As the car sped towards the jumping ramps, each band leapt into the air, effectively blocking all the rival lenses. Much to the fury of the photographers, but my exclusive had been saved. The car hit the water at high speed, rapidly disappearing amidst a cascade of bubbles. It took about an hour for a team of rescue divers, hired by Joe, to extricate Dave from the wreckage and bring him safely to shore. During this time, he calmly sat patiently in the pitch darkness, breathing from a diver's air tank, which had been bolted next to the removed passenger seat. My pictures made over a hundred publications around the world after appearing exclusively in a British newspaper and in Life magazine in America. 
The three lessons I draw from this assignment are as follows. Whenever possible, try not to be pressured into shooting photographs when the conditions, in your view, are unfavourable. This is not always possible, of course, but whenever it is, try and decide for yourself and not have the decision decided by others. Second, when facing just one chance to get your pictures, always treble check every aspect of the shoot, not just the equipment and the lens, but look particularly at the backgrounds, which in many cases can be very distracting. You need to do something to eliminate these backgrounds either by shooting at a very wide stop so they'll be out of focus or changing the angle of the shot to remove them from the view. Third, never miss a final shot because you are either too slow or too impatient to wait for what the great French photojournalist Henri Cartier-Bresson called the moment of truth. In my next video I'll be moving from four wheels to two and showing you a sequence of a girl motorcycle stunt rider who, while speeding through a tunnel of fire, ended up with the hottest hot pads of the 60s. If you'd like to see some more of my photographs, please go to www.thewayitwas.uk. If you'd like to purchase a copy of my book, The Way It Was, then please go to the same website and take a look at what it contains. If you lived through the 60s, it will bring back some memories. If you never lived through the 60s, you'll find a foreign country where they do things very differently. Music